Yep. All right, thank you everybody for coming today. Um, I'm here today uh, with Sandra, who's travelled from interstate to uh, talk to us, and she'll have something to say in a little while. Um, but as you know, we're here to talk about um, the murder of Dale McCauley and a subsequent arrest. Dale McCauley was 44 years old uh, when he went missing on the 16th of January in 1998 from Wollonga, and later that year his murder, his death was declared a major crime. Yesterday, I'm happy to say that we arrested a 65-year-old man from Seaton, and that person has been charged at the City Watch House, refused police bail, and will be appearing in court later today, where it's our intention to oppose his bail. I can't go into the evidence um, about the case, but I can provide you some information as to how it came about, and Sandra is happy to have a chat with you shortly. As you know, Operation Persist commenced in early 2015, and it was an holistic strategy we developed and implemented to review and investigate our old unsolved cases and what's commonly called our cold cases. Since early 2015, we've rolled out a number of strategies um, across the state, and those strategies are gradually starting to come to fruition. One of the central components of it is to review um, individual cases, and Dale's is one of those cases. We had an independent review team who came together and worked tirelessly over a period of time to review every aspect of the previous investigation um, and to look for opportunities for investigation. As a result, they came to me um, with a, with a report identifying what those opportunities were and we discussed a possible strategy which was subsequently implemented. In late uh, 2015 we commenced an investigation which remained covert for a period of time and, and not open to the public and then in November you recall we did a Crime Stoppers segment um, which Sandra um, appeared in appealing for help and then in December uh, went public with the investigation and conducted another search of Dale's property. Since uh, November, I can tell you that we had 13 additional Crime Stoppers calls, um, which were beneficial, and over the years since he disappeared, we've had 40 Crime Stoppers calls. Together, that's all um, culminated in the arrest of the man yesterday. But the investigation's not over. The investigation's continuing. Sadly, we're yet to recover Dale's body but I can tell you that there is a determination amongst the investigation team to do everything possible um, to recover Dale and to return him to his family. Unfortunately, both of his parents died without that occurring, and obviously Sandra wants that to happen. I'll hand over to Sandra to have a talk um, to you now, and um, she's happy to take um, some of your questions. Yes. Um I do want to um, find an ending to this. Um, Dale is my younger brother, and there are no more brothers and sisters, because um, uh, father's passed away, our mother's passed away as well now, so I'm the only one that's left. And um, with all of the work that the police have been doing, it's been absolutely wonderful, and to have reached this stage now, where they've found somebody, um, I would like that person to speak up and say where Dale finally has been put, where his body is. I, I want to bring him back home and um, find out you know, where he's been put and so on. Mm. And also, um, the same for all other families that have got missing family and such. and. They're in the same boat as I am, sitting, wondering, you know, waiting and hoping that whoever, whatever has happened or wherever that member is, family member, that you're going to find out. So that's what I'm looking for today. Mm. Um, Sandra, the moment that police contacted you and said they have arrested someone over um, your brother's murder, what was that moment like and how did you feel? Um, it was, it was not quite, it, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a shock. Um, it was relief 
um, because you know, the police had kept me informed that, as they hadn't been up to Dow's property and the searches they'd been doing and such. And, um, and also that they had received further phone calls from members of the public. So um, I just thought it's finally, hopefully, coming to an end now. Mm. Were there times when you thought that you wouldn't find yourself at this point, that you think that you lost a bit of hope? Um, yeah, well, he went missing in 1998. You know, it, it is a long time. And um, prior to that, uh, Dale and I knew each other as young kids and teenagers and not much longer after that. And, um, and then, of course, when our father passed away, uh, it just seemed as though Dale had disappeared, vanished. So, yes. Mm. Did you suspect that Dale had been murdered? I, I thought it was strange that bank accounts hadn't been used. Um, uh, he, he's a very quiet person, my brother was. Uh, he had a lot of friends. And it just he wasn't the sort of person to uh, not be in touch with his friends and such. And yes, I, I did sort of begin to wonder what had happened, you know. Uh, particularly the, as far as I understand, his passport was still at his home and such, so... Mm. Does this give you hope that um, you will, uh, his remains will be found? Yes, it does. Yes, yes. Mm. And I'm hoping that the person that the police have arrested will see this, hear this, and decide to speak up and say, well, Dale's body is wherever it is. Are you Dale's mm. older sister? Yes, I am. Seven years. Mm. Um, the person that police allege did this will be in court this afternoon and presumably you'll be wanting to be there. How, how do you feel about that, the potential of looking him in the eye? Um, <laughs> a, bit of, a bit of both, I think. A bit of um, do I want to go? And then probably a bit more of... I want to see what this person looks like so that it's not just a vague sort of, you know, who is he, what does he look like or anything. I'd, I'd like to see him in person and, yeah. How has life been for the last 18 years, having this big question mark over your heads and not knowing what's actually happening? Um, there have been occasions where I've sort of wished it wasn't there. Um, it's hard when you've got nobody else because of no family left to talk to about it. Um, and I guess also the fact that Dale and I hadn't kept in touch for quite a long time, so it was a bit sort of vague, I suppose, in that respect. But now when I sit down and go through the family albums and I see us as kids and I see us as teenagers, um, well, nobody should be murdered. It's as simple as that, you know. And, and whoever goes around murdering people, well, they have to be caught. Do you feel that you've been robbed of the opportunity to make amends with um, I've been robbed of the opportunity... Well, I haven't been robbed of the opportunity so much as my mum and dad have. You know, my mum was living in England and my brother was ringing her every birthday and every Christmas. And in 1998, those phone calls stopped. So she didn't know what was going on. She didn't understand. Um, I do remember that Dad did have a meeting with the police and asked people to please speak up and help find Dale, you know. And, um, yes, you know, it's... It's a long time, but it doesn't change the fact that it, it is family, and it's the only family I have left now. Mm. Mr Superintendent, what's led to this moment? You mentioned there have been crime stoppers calls. Um, has that information been the trigger for, for this arrest? It's, it's really the whole operation persist process. As I say, one part of it is to actually review the cases. This case was subject to an independent review. It was a very detailed review. It took, took 
a period of time to do, and we have a process following that review, how it's assessed and how we determine whether it warrants investigation and whether there is opportunities. Um, so we've gone through all that process, identified what we thought was the opportunities, committed the resources, and um, we've come to this conclusion. But there's, offenders should be in no doubt that South Australian Police are committed to reviewing our cold cases and solving as many as we can. Um, the fact that a case is old, the fact that a case is solved, the fact that there has been no leads for a long time doesn't mean you just give up. Um, you don't give up, you just fight harder and harder. Um, and it's a process now of going through our cold cases, looking at everyone with the same level of detail, and then as we identify those opportunities, seizing the moment, and you know we will get results. And there should be a lot of people out there feeling pretty uncomfortable because they've committed these terrible crimes. They can run, they can hide, um, but the passage of time doesn't take away what they've done. And we're hoping to unravel it, as has happened in this case, and arrest those people. And we've got over 40 cases where um, the remains of other missing people or people have been murdered who haven't been found. And um, we're going to do everything we possibly can to recover those people. Uh, and we won't, um, we won't give up on that. Um, I'd like to, I guess, take this opportunity to thank everybody that's been involved in the investigation and the forensic teams. Um, again, the media, who are actually part of all our investigations, Crime Stoppers, and all those people over the years who have rung up. It actually does make a difference, um, and it helps to bring about these sort of results. But I guess in terms of what we want now, the reality is the job is not over. Dale's body hasn't been recovered, and um, the investigation team is committed to finding his body. Um, we would ask anybody in the community that has any information at all about where, Dottie, where Dale might be to contact Crime Stoppers. There is still a $200,000 reward, and that reward also applies to anybody who provides information that leads to the recovery of Dale's remains. And as Sandra has said, and as I've said, there are over 100 other unsolved cases and a large amount of cases where victims haven't been recovered. So anybody with information about any of our unsolved cases, um, we'd encourage you to pick up the phone and ring Crime Stoppers today. Those calls that came through from Crime Stoppers, 